Blessings, friends. Today we're going to talk about there being no shortcuts to heaven. We're looking at this idea from the viewpoint of Science of Mind teachings in which heaven is a state of consciousness because both heaven and hell are states of consciousness. And so no shortcuts to heaven is meaning that the idea that heaven is not a place, but rather heaven is, is the way in which we develop our own personal consciousness. Now, of course, we know that our subconscious thoughts are created from the belief systems of our experiences in life. And so that same thing is true for our present day consciousness, our present day experiences. And so each idea that we bring to mind, with it comes a consciousness that we are creating and we are personally creating our own state of heaven or our own state of hell. Now, that comes in conflict at times like this where we're experiencing and seeing things like corona, coronavirus, COVID-19, and people experiencing a lot of pain and suffering. But that does not ever change the ultimate consciousness, the ground of being of all that is. It does not change God. God did not create the fears and the worries that people have. God is creator of all that is. And by all that is, everything that exists is of the universe, is of the universal intelligence that we call God, the divine energy of all life. And that being so, there's nothing outside of it. And so each one of us is free to think of the abundance of thoughts that are abounding in this world. And whichever we choose to think, to hold in our mind, become our own personal heaven or hell. When I was little, my brothers and I used to sing in church quite often, and we sang out of a women's trio book. My mom played the piano for us, and one of our favorite songs was, It's Not an Easy Road. It's not an easy road, we're traveling to heaven, for many are the thorns on the way. The idea was that we go through life, and life is a struggle and a challenge, and we're fighting against sins and degradations and things through, all through our lives. And then we finally reach that point where we've done a good job and we could actually enter into that state of heaven. I like the idea in Science of Mind that heaven is a state of mind. And it's, we can experience heaven at any time. We don't have to wait till we're done with this life experience to actually experience heaven. We can live in heaven or we can live in hell. Right now it's always a choice. And so um, remember that heaven is a state of mind. You know, when you're in the middle of a difficult situation, it can seem overwhelming. But you can take a step back and look at it with a different perspective. You can view your situation as an observer. This is actually the name. It's called reframing, and it actually works. You can release the stress and trauma you're feeling and look at the situation objectively without any emotional attachment. And when you're able to do that, the negatives seem to just dis dis disappear and go back into the nothingness from which they came. Remember, they were only in your states of mind to start with. You're releasing your negative attachments. You're severing that connection to negative ideas, and you're living in the positive. So how can you turn it around? Here's an exercise to find the good. You value the extremes in life. If your situation seems ridiculously frustrating, Recognize the potential humor in just how ridiculously frustrating and annoying it is and then look at that from a different, different point of view. You probably heard the phrase, uh, crying over spilled milk. And that's an old saying 
and it has to do with the idea that you spill a little milk, it's no big deal. There's plenty of milk to go around. But when the, in the, at the time, it seems like it's such a, a tragedy. And um, in your imagination, you can take any negative situation to an extreme that becomes even more ridiculous until you find yourself amused. For example, you're, walk, you're sitting in a long line in traffic at a dead stop. Imagine that hours pass by and then days pass by, visualizing your loved ones coming to visit you in your new home, which happens to be your car, or holding your child's birthday party in the middle lane of the interstate. The mailman even has to drive by your car to drop off your mail because this is your new home now. You're staying here and you're not going anywhere. Kind of get the picture? You start looking at it saying, well, that's silly. And so you can have a little different point of view at it. Or you can make it a game. Let's go back to your car again and say you're driving along and people keep um, darting in front of you and cutting you off. And you can imagine some absurd emergency that must be so important to that other driver that they have to cut you off and be inconsiderate and take up your time. For example, they suddenly realize they have to change the litter box. Or, Wheel of Fortune is about to start. I'm going to miss Vanna's new dress. <laughs> or, Oh, I have to pee so bad, I have to get home. You know, this works well for predictable or uh, repetitive, annoying situations that are beyond control. You can begin to view them in their own special way instead of letting them annoy you. You realize life isn't really such a bad place to be. It, in fact, it's quite humorous in my state of mind. One of the reasons that sitcoms are so popular on television is that many of them take somewhat universal situations, things that we all experience on a daily basis, that people find frustrating and they push them to a little further to show the silly side of it all. Can you relate in the conditions you find yourselves in today, in this coronavirus stuff that's going on, uh, social distancing, find yourself stuck at home? Well, in normal times, a, stay a staycation would be quite welcome and would seem appealing to sleep in. But at these times when you're stuck at home, it feels um, frustrating. Realizing that some universal annoying, prolonged, frustrating situations are actually fun or humorous or at least not that bad, can help you endure them with a smile. You can begin to experience a little bit of heaven in every circumstance of life. So now we know what you do in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> we know how playful you get to entertain your own mind and switch it to a place of peace and joy and fun. So I'd like to take a look at a couple of the ideas that David said. First, the song he said he sang when he was younger. I want to point out the fact that the idea that many religious beliefs do teach that, that if you behave yourself in a certain way, then you will get into heaven. And in Science of Mind, we teach rather the state of mind of heaven or hell. And so there is no place that you go. You are already here. We are eternal beings. We don't have to go anywhere. We are already a divine soul. And that soul part of us is eternal. And so that soul part lives on and on and on. It doesn't have to go anywhere. So I'd also like to look at that idea that he spoke about of coronavirus and how it's affecting many. So there are many people that are experience the physical pain and suffering of this disease. And we recognize that and we know that and our heart goes out to them and it go, our hearts go out to the many people who are experiencing the loss of loved ones or not being able to be with loved ones during that time. And so there are many ways in which and many times in which we are called to express our compassion 
to feel deeply our humanity of humankind. And yet at the same time that we walk through those experiences, we are also called to maintain a consciousness of heaven. And so some of you may be wondering, how, how can you do both of those things at the same time? Well, I'm not going to tell you that I've mastered it perfectly, but I am going to say that I believe it is absolutely possible. And I do believe that I've come a long way in these years of living. <laughs> and so every day we have the opportunity to determine whether we're going to live in a state of heaven or a state of hell regardless of what's going on around us. And I think that for many of us, we think that when there's an experience in our life that is painful, it must look painful and it must look painful for a long time. And I don't think that's true. I think, I believe, that we have the ability, the power, to walk through stressful and painful situations with a mind full of heaven. And that mind full of heaven comes from knowing there is one life, there is one power back of all life. And that power is right there within us. It is that soul part of us that is eternal and infinite. So let's look at a quote from a gentleman by the name of John Milton. He was born in 1608 in London, and he's the author of Paradise Lost. He's a poet also. And he wrote, the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. Again. The mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. Throughout the ages, many people have lived their life with this knowing and it's powerful because it indeed helps us to walk through the dark nights of the soul and every one of us experiences those. There are many thoughts in the world but there is one mind, one divine mind, and each one of us have a personal mind within that. So I noticed that as I listen to conversations, and mostly these days that's online, I noticed that I could agree quite often from both points of view. I could create a meaningful stance from either point of view that people are taking. So one of the ideas that relates to this talk in particular of creating a heaven or hell within your own consciousness is the idea that when people come to us in pain, some people say you just need to meet them right where they are. And some people say you need to talk consciousness because that consciousness will elevate them to new heights while they're walking through whatever it is that's going on for them. So I'm going to give us three possible, and I'm sure there are more, three possible responses to that question. One is absolutely meet them right where they are, show compassion and humanity. A second one is, when someone says, don't talk about consciousness, really? What else is there? So let's look at that idea a little deeper. I'm sitting here on a stool, a piano stool, and it is beautifully designed. But back of that piano stool, there is God. The piano stool is made of wood, and that wood, of course, comes from a tree. The tree comes from the seed. And the seed comes from the divine pattern called seed for tree. 
or however you would like to make that statement. There is a divine pattern in God, in consciousness, in all that is, that is a creative power and it is good and it is always present for each and every one of us regardless of whether we're feeling it and experiencing it in the moment. And so here's my third answer. Why can't it be both? Why is it that we have to choose between knowing consciousness and talking consciousness and being there for people, experiencing and expressing humanity and compassion? I don't believe it's either or. I believe it's both. I believe that we, when we meet people right where they, they are, they are being consciousness in action. And we are also. Compassion, pain, words, they're all the same. They're all of the same consciousness. We experience them differently. And so we all may experience a little bit of hell in our heaven or a little bit of heaven in our hell. But the important part is to realize that we are in control of those thoughts within our own body. So our opinions are like a one size fits all shirt. And I don't know about you, but they never work very well for me. <laughs> you? <laughs> no. <laughs> One size does not fit all. And so there are many paths. And just because there are many paths, it doesn't make one path right and another path wrong. We have to be generous and compassionate enough with one another to allow each one to be where they are, if they so desire, and to realize that it's all okay. And so there's a kid's song that says, you be you and I'll be me and we'll be a happy family. And you know, I think that what we teach our children in some of those songs is so important. And at the same time, there's a book written by Ruth Cross and Morris Sendak in which they, the title is, I'll be you and you be me. So as we realize heaven from the point of view of someone else, we are able to activate a greater sense of love within ourselves. When we find our thoughts drifting into la la land where we're in such denial about what's happening about us and we're no earthly good to anyone else, we've stepped out of balance. And likewise, when we find our thought veering down an avenue of fear, worry, concern, again, we're out of balance. And we get to create the thought within our own mind to bring ourselves back into that perfect balance. There are no shortcuts to heaven. There is one direct path, and it's through your own personal consciousness. And so now we're going to be entertained by a beautiful spiritual from David called Tower of Babel. Do you want to say anything about that? Enjoy. All right. And enjoy your state of heaven. And so it is. So it is. Way back yonder in the Bible time, the people got tired of the daily grind. They lost good religion out of their mind, trying to find a short road to heaven. Trying to find a short road to heaven. They took on a fever of a discontent with everything here in the firmament. They raised up their eyes to the element. Trying to find a short road to heaven Trying to 
life and a short road to heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven is a happy land, heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven is a happy land, heaven. The people all gathered in a swarming crowd. They built a high tower up through the clouds till they got so dizzy that they start to shout. Couldn't nobody tell you what they shout. About. Their tongues got twisted when they tried to talk Their legs start to quiver when they want to walk And the Lord changed his speech of brother from brother Till one talk one way and another talk another Jabba, 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 jolly Jabba, 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 cause their work wasn't holy Jabba, 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 jolly in a different tongue With such a big noise up in the sky They give up the tower to the by and by And down to the ground they come in a run With everybody talking in an unknown tongue And right on down to this here day Some folks talk in a different way And the cause of that was their pappies wasn't able to get up to heaven on the Tower of Babel. Jabba, 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 jolly. Jabba, 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 cause the word wasn't holy. Jabba, 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 jung. Everybody talking in a different tongue. Babel, Babel, wasn't no fable. Babel, Babel, Tower of Babel.